Hello and welcome to Norco College. Today we are going to spend some time exploring our online assessment tool system called TrackDat. I'm going to take you on a tour of the system, show you how to create assessment and how you can um, use it to track how your discipline is actually doing in assessment. The first screen you see on the computer is Norco College. What might be helpful as you're doing this um, a training is to have two screens up in front of you, one to watch and one to be able to follow along in your own tracked at screen. You can pause the video at any time to then try the um, activities that I'm showing you. The first place we're going to go is to the employee link. In the employee link you can get to tracked at by following the faculty link which will take you to a screen that has um, many resources but you're going to come down to the academic senate resource and click on the assessment committee. The reason I'm taking you in this way is because many people don't realize that there are a lot of tools available online through the assessment committee. You can read about the statement of purpose. You can come to a meeting because then you can see the schedule. If you have any questions on what we're doing, you can go into the minutes and read those. Or you can scroll all the way to the bottom to find the assessment resources. Next to the assessment resources is tracked at. Click on the button and it will take you directly to the online login. Your username is your first initial and last name. Your password, when you first start, is also going to be your user at uh, your first initial and last name. I've already changed mine and so I'm going to go ahead and type it in. So just to recount, first initial, last name, and then first initial, last name. I would encourage you to change it because everybody will know your first initial and your last name and could get into your TrackDat account. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. My advice is that when you are accessing TrackDat that you use Google Chrome. You're going to have um, better efficiency with it and there are some screens that will work far, far better in Google Chrome than Internet Explorer. You'll notice the screen is open to the last place that I was working. I was working with a sociology discipline member. So I'm going to go ahead and change the screen. So when you open it, you are going to go into a discipline screen. So you can see that I'm scrolling down and you see a lot of different disciplines. When you open this, you are only going to see the um, screens that you are able to access in your discipline. My discipline happens to be early childhood education and so I'm going to open that screen. In front of you you're going to have what is our home page or our dashboard. On the dashboard you're going to see a lot of information. At the top you're going to see a link system or a pathway system. This becomes helpful later in the training if you're man man maneuvering around the screens. Basically what it means is that I am in the discipline of early childhood and I'm on the home page. If I were to click on any of these, a next link would occur and so I can move back and forth using this link at the top. Below this you see the discipline planning summary. In this situation, in TrackDat, discipline refers to the program level outcomes or the, or the, the higher level um, learning opportunities for students. You'll see that in early childhood, in the discipline, I have four PLOs. You'll see that I have assessed um, PLO number one with two different assessment methods, and I have already input results. I also have results for PLO two, three, and four, and they are all part of the same assessment method. I can click on these buttons and things will open. For example, the actual assessment that I conducted. So I'm going to go back a step. I can use my backtrack. I can also click on the actual PLO so that I can see it in the same way. So there's two different ways that you can open up work that has been completed already in the PLO. I can click on the results tab and it's going to take me directly to an opportunity to read the results. So in TrackDat what you have are a number of opportunities to be able to access information via different avenues you decide which one ultimately is the quickest for you and it's going to take you a little bit of time just to explore that those opportunities in the system. So below the PLOs um, you see the course planning summary. Course planning equals student learning outcome. The first thing you should do as a discipline when you come in here is scroll down, make sure that all of your courses are in here, 
or identify that there's a course in here that shouldn't be in here. For example, AR31, the one that I have highlighted right now, is actually a discontinued course. We're in the process of making a smooth transition from curriculum, uh, the curriculum committee to the assessment committee to make sure that updates uh, get included into TrackDAT as courses become discontinued or created. So if you see in this list something that shouldn't be here or something that's missing, please let us know and we can take care of that. So all of your courses should be listed. Your next column are your student learning outcomes. You'll see the, the number listed as it goes down the column. Now for some of them, when I first looked at this, I went, oh my goodness, 10 for EAR 28? That doesn't seem right. But when you come in here, you'll see that you have active SLOs and inactive SLOs, and we've labeled them as previous. As people go through different um, things like ADT creation, I went through something called a, an alignment project, you're going to start to see that you're going to have defunct or old or previous SLOs. So don't panic when you see these numbers if they seem completely wrong. The next column is going to be your assessment methods column. In here, you're going to be able to again open it and see everything that's occurred already in this discipline with regard to these outcomes. So you can see that there are dates in here showing you that there was an assessment completed. It'll also indicate that with an arrow to the left hand side of this, this row. If I open this, you can see the different types of assignments that have been completed, some of which are examples, this one with gobbledygook right here, um, for demonstrating the system. So what you have in front of you is a very easy way to look back over time of what has actually occurred. As you keep clicking the arrows that are pointing to the right, you can open up information and see the actual assessment that was completed. You'll notice that the arrow is now a down arrow, indicating that there's nothing else to open um, with regard to that assessment. You can close them, clean up the screen, open them one at a time if you like, and move backwards. So that's the first, um, that's the first thing that you can see with the SLOs. You'll notice that I'm using this back arrow um, to take me back. Um, I just prefer that. The results. So if I go into the results number, it will pull up a similar looking screen with the SLOs. But what you start to now see are numbers telling you how many results have actually been input. Results are the outcome of your assessment. So you create an, uh, you identify an assessment you want to do. You run it through for the semester. You collect your data. You come back in and you input your results. So you can see I've got a number of different um, results written here that I can take a look at. I can open up the down arrow and take a look and see what has actually occurred in my, um, in my discipline. You'll notice over here that there isn't the down arrow and so I have to go in here to input results. This means that I have an assessment that is in progress and I would come in here after I complete the assessment to put in my results. So that just gives you an introduction to that screen. The improvements column, when you click on it, will open up areas where you've already identified next step activities that you want to do or a place where you want to actually input an improvement. So you can see right here that this is an improvement that was completed already. After providing the students with extra activities and identifying sites for the observation, the students increased their average score to 80%. What you're going to find is that information connects to information connects to information. All of the small pieces that you see in these, in these individual screens will ultimately be available to see in one place when you run a result. So that covers the, the main part of this dashboard screen, this home screen, where you can see all these different numbers. When you first open your screen, the likelihood is you are not going to have numbers embedded into this section. The reason being, you haven't taken the time yet to actually generate track that knowledge inside the system. You may have completed a lot of assessments, but we haven't translated it into the track that screens. So don't panic. We do have assessment. It is located in TrackDAT. It's in here in the document repository, but it has not yet been turned into TrackDAT language. I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later. So this is just the right hand side of the screen. A lot of information that is very helpful when you are looking at which courses need to be assessed, which ones have been overly assessed more than others, etc, etc. Now let's just go down the left hand side of the screen. I'm just going to start at the top and I encourage you to explore this um, screen so that you get to know exactly what's inside of it. The discipline has three areas you can open. The first one 
general information. You'll see mine's blank. We just got the Tracked at 5 system um, in the middle of August and I haven't had a chance to type anything yet to identify my discipline, to maybe identify um, certificates that we have, associate's degree for transfer, um, or any other information that might be helpful for other discipline members to know. Assignments is an interesting tab. This is where you can create an activity, an assignment, um, an assessment really, that you can send to other discipline members. Maybe you get together, you identify a specific assessment you want to do, and you are the one who comes in and creates the dialogue. The dialogue can include you sending them the actual assessment that's to be used. It can include um, these are the questions we want to embed into the, the, the take-home test, whatever it is. This is where you, as a person who's leading the assessment, could distribute to other members of your discipline what it is you're going to work on that um, semester. The personnel button is going to show you who else has access to your discipline screen. You'll notice that there are a lot of people who have access to mine. At the very top here are all the members of the Norco Assessment Committee. Please ignore the titles. They, they We're dealing with some glitches with the system at the moment. And then at the bottom you see actual um, associate professors in ECE and, and those are all my part-time faculty. Um, we set the role that each person has, um, the accessibility that they have. Your chairs will have access to all of your disciplines in that department. NAC will have access because they will be doing scoring of program reviews and most of you will just have access to your own discipline. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is how to actually input an assessment. You'll notice that there's the discipline planning and course planning. Discipline refers to the program level and course planning refers to the SLO level. So program level outcome will go into discipline planning, SLO level will go into course planning. If you're going to go into a program level, then you're going to need to change um, at the top here. You're going to have to go into your either um, ADT or into your certificate um, so that you can input program level outcomes. We're not going to do that one to start with. Most of you are going to be spending your time in the course planning SLO inputting um, data. So if I open this up, you'll see that there are two options. The first option is the course plan. The second option is results. I would advise you to do your assessment in two stages. The first stage should be to create the assessment to begin with. So all you have to do is click on course plan. It will open up this screen. You select the course in which you would like to do the assessment. So let's go introduction to curriculum. It will open up the SLOs that are connected to that course. You decide which SLO you would like to use. I'm going to click on Identify Theoretical Program Model Implications. Then it's going to open up a screen where you can see, okay, I would like to do some assessment. I'm going to click on the arrow next to Assessment Methods. You can see what has previously been done. And you can now go ahead and identify your new assessment method. A simple screen will open with a drop-down menu. Inside of this menu, you will see options for the types of assignments that you might be giving. If you don't see what you need, for example, someone recently set a case study, let us know and we can embed anything new that is fairly broad so that other disciplines could use it. I'm going to go ahead and do a written assignment. I'm going to type in my assessment method. In this section, um, my recommendation is that you keep this fairly uh, more of a summary than highly detailed. If you want to add the detail of the actual assignment, the specific questions you're embedding into the test, then what you want to do is utilize the document repository. The document repository is a place where that you can store any document that relates to any assignment. It's where you can put a lot of information without that then clogging up the report that you will print later through TrackDAT. So this assessment method that I think we're going to use for identifying um, theoretical and program model implications. My students are going to do an observations, an observation. So you can see I've just started typing in what I would have them do. In here you can type as much as you want. You can also copy and paste from an existing Word document. You can copy and paste um, data fields as well if you would like. But again, I just want to caution you that you don't overload this area with too much information that is going to be cumbersome when you come to reading your report. 
your benchmark. Uh, maybe this is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm going to set a baseline. You'll notice that I'm making typing errors. It will correct, it will identify spelling errors so that you can correct them. Let's say that I've done this assessment a couple of times before. I might already know that the students in the first um, opportunity to do this assignment averaged a 73% as a class. As a discipline, I might not be happy with that. And so, and I noticed when I was grading that there were things that they weren't quite getting. This is the opportunity for you to say, I'd like them to do this level of ability based on what I now know about this assignment. So this becomes very individualized, the benchmark for the disciplines. You'll notice it's not a required field, but it might be something that um, discipline starts to use to provoke a conversation about what is our expected uh, performance level in this course for this particular uh, SLO. The notes box, I use this to identify the exact assignment that corresponds to this or identify maybe the other discipline members who are going to participate in this assignment. This is very individualized again. I'm going to hit save and once it tells me it's successfully saved, return. You'll then sc scroll down and you'll see here is my assignment. It's ready to go. I can then click on this, see the information that I input. I can also then relate documents or documents that are associated with this assessment. You'll see the little um, tool over here that you can click on. This will take you directly to the document repository. The document repository is kind of a library where you can store lots of information. So here's EER 24, the course that we're assessing. Here are all of the documents that I've already input into Tractat or Judy has uploaded for me. It includes um, assignments. It also includes existing assessments that I've done in previous semesters. So anything that you've sent to us or almost everything should be included inside of this um, repository. You should check first to make sure that the folders for every course are in here. If they're not, it means that we don't have a copy of an ass assessment for that course or documents that have been sent to us. Um, and so that's your opportunity to contact us and say um, you, you're missing something. It's also your opportunity to add something. Um, you'll have to do that inside of the document repository over here before you start your assessment or to make sure that it is, is, it is in the system. So all I have to do to relate a document is come in here, find the assignment. Um, I'm going to just pick one of the assignments right here just because it'll make my life easier than creating a new one. So I click the down arrow, relate the document, you'll notice that it moves over to the right hand side. That means that that document is now going to be, once I hit complete, related to the assessment that we previously completed. So here it is right here. If I would like to include other discipline members in this assessment, I'm going to use the uh, manage assignment link. I'm going to assign it to a discipline member. Let's use Shauna for today. I'm going to type any notes to her about, you remember that conversation we had, that we came up with this assessment, we're going to do it together, here's the information, okay? I can email it to her, I can also send myself an email um, acknowledging that um, it was sent. I hit save, I hit return, once it tells me it's saved, and then it's right here. So everything is set. I then teach the course. I use the assessment. Shona teaches her section. She uses the assessment. We might get together and we might talk about what we discovered. And then we come back into Tractat and input results. So you can see that it's there. this is telling me that I've already done a number of different results for different SLOs. And so you have to kind of keep track of what it is you were assessing. So what was it that we were assessing? Even if you forget, you can still open it up. You can find the one that you did. Nope, not that one not that one. It's right in here. Written assignment, students will complete an observation in a child development center. So you can come in here, add summary of results by clicking on the green circle. It will open up a new screen where you can type in your results. You might say after collaborating with Shauna or the discipline member, we compared our results, you've come up with a summary across two sections, the students averaged 80%, you discovered that they were far more comfortable with this theorist versus that theorist. So whatever you want to type in here that really gives a rich answer to the outcome of the assessment. 
You can embed data fields, you can embed numbers, you can copy and paste them directly from a Word document, and they will hold up fairly well in the report format. You identify the semester, you identify if your benchmark was yes. I'm going to click no because then I can show you um, the next step. You click save and return. And now you can see that it is completed adding information. Obviously, if there was more typed here, it would look more like the screen above. Now, I decided that they didn't meet the benchmark. So I want to continue working out how to help students improve in this particular skill. Maybe Shauna and I identified a specific theorist that they were struggling with. So I'm just going to abbreviate here. Piaget needs work, not great assessment language, but um, you get the idea that in here I'm going to say we're going to increase in-class activities, update the PowerPoint, do more small assignments before the big one is due, etc, etc, etc. Whatever adaptation, change, improvement, modification that you think will help the students to attain that particular piece of the assignment better, that's what you're going to put into here. And this is what we call closing the loop. Some of you will identify as you're going through this process that your course outline of record and your student learning outcomes are just not blended, they're not matching well, and that there might be a need for some change. And that's just a place where you can identify that. This is where we start to tie assessment to curriculum development. I'm going to hit save. It's saved and return. So now I have one assessment that is now in a, a state of flux. It means that there's more needed. It means that the next semester I need to do some more follow-up or a closing the loop assignment. So let's say the next semester comes, I change or modify or implement the things they identified in the improvement, I reassess, and then I want to come back in here to update my results. I click on the follow-up and it's just another text box. In here I write, wow, they did awesome, 85% average, and I might also comment on the qualitative difference in the work. So this is a place where you can really explore what you're doing in the classroom and how it's impacting the student's learning. This is exactly what assessment is for. It is a, a place for you to spend time self-reflecting, capturing the things that you do all the time in the classroom that help students move from one place of understanding to the next. Click save and return. That assessment is now completed. As you start to do more and more assessment, as you can see on the screen, they're going to be in front of you. You're going to be able to see which courses have I spent time doing assessment in. Your part-time faculty can come in here and see this as well. They can get ideas, they can get suggestions, um, they can see what's been working um, in the classrooms, and, and, and you can grow, quite honestly, in the way in which you help your students. So that's at the student learning outcome level. Before I move out of this screen, um, let me just make sure you know how to get into the document repository. It's over on the left, document repository. You can add a folder by this drop-down. You just name it. I know I have a new course opening, so I'm just going to go ahead and type this in here. Ready for any assessment that we do. You can then add anything into that folder. I can delete it, and I should then be able to add into that folder just by clicking on the Add Document link. That completes the um, first step in the tracked out training. I wanted to just focus with this training on course planning, student level outcome assessment. There will be future trainings on program level planning, program level outcome assessment, how to use the document repository more, how to do the mapping, and how to translate your existing Word documents that you've already completed assessment into tracked out language. That's it for now. Thank you.